Hi, I'm Steve Carlson. I'm running for president in 2016, like Donald Trump. He's an independent. I'm an independent candidate. I've taken centrist positions on immigration, Islam, religious liberties, and other issues. Now I want to talk to you about gun control. It's ridiculous. We've got the present person elected by the Democrats, this Obama, threatening to confiscate all kinds of people's guns and to say that he could order further background checks by his own executive order. Well, I suppose if you wanted to work with some of the agencies, like perhaps the FBI, and make it a law enforcement matter, maybe even Homeland Security, he could have some very tenuous basis. But the fact is that none of that can overcome the Second Amendment. Now, people are making a big deal about those who are relying on the ability to defend themselves against their own government as the intent of the Second Amendment, of providing for being armed, the armed part of militia. A lot of Americans are armed. I suppose one of the ways that the government could harm its citizens is by not maintaining bodily safety and the safety of property. It would be protecting from bodily harm by arresting all the bad guys. So obviously, there's always been an element of self-defense. And certainly, nobody wants to take away the right of self-defense. So if somebody's going to stab you or punch you or hit you over the head, you have the right of self-defense. So then the question is, well, do you have the right to self-defense against firearms? Because usually that's where this is needed. You have people coming up and robbing people at gunpoint. That's a long-standing tradition. And it's obvious that this can't be allowed. Then the question is, well, what's the remedy for that? And the remedy appears to be the deterrent of having your own firearms as the most logical one. And in fact, George Washington apparently did make the statement about people having to have guns against their own government. Well, this is really an interesting statement because George Washington himself worked for the British government. That was his own government. And in the end, because they oppressed the colonists so badly, he's got a whole list of complaints that he presented to the colonel he worked for. They ended up using those guns as part of the American Revolution. So you can't understand the Second Amendment without understanding the American Revolution. Now that doesn't reflect on any particular administration, for instance, Obama or Bush or anybody else. It's just that it's fundamental to the Constitution. There's another amendment about you can't have troops quartered in the people's houses. That's protected against through the Constitution. And I'm sure that many of the states also protected these rights. Now, it's always been a little unclear as to just how it was to work. And admittedly, weapons have advanced. But this country was founded as a colony of the greatest military power in the history of the world at that time. They were armed for a number of reasons, to defend themselves against marauding bands, uh, say, from the French and Indian Wars. And they were enlisted by the British in that war. And again, a lot of them lived in the woods and had guns to protect against the dangerous wildlife. And basically, it's always been seen as a way of safety. And Obama can't take that away any more than Obama can take away the border in order to bring in foreigners who would vote for his party, okay? Cannot take away our defense against ISIS or Iran and cannot take away our health care. The man, despite the cheerleading from the Democrats because they think this all makes them big winners. The man has been dictatorial for a long time. And our Constitution is designed to protect the nation against such dictatorialness and dictatorship. And I believe that this is one thing that needs to be stressed right now in this discussion. Now, they've gone after Donald Trump and Ben Carson. Ben Carson has given his own testimony of how he has dealt with guns used in a crime. And it's not clear whether he carried in some cases, he urges people to defend themselves, and in other cases, he's talked about how he has prevented bloodshed when a gun was used to, to threaten him and others in a robbery. It's not clear whether or not he carries firearms because he simply deflected the attention away to the uh, cashier who had the money, which the robber was no doubt after. And as far as I know, no bloodshed ensued. And he's come under fire because he started to point out how if the Jews in Germany had had guns 
if they had not all been taken away from them by Hitler. There is no doubt that Hitler would have had a lot of trouble rounding those folks up and sending them to concentration camps. It would not have happened. And any liberal that starts to chuckle about that must be out of their mind, because it would have been stopped cold. They would have created a war within Germany. And with the other Germans seeing what was going on, it could actually have toppled Hitler and saved not only the Jewish people's lives, all the lives of the Germans and the civilian population and the development of those terrible weapons which have brought us to the edge where we are now, the nuclear weapons. So this is just very, very bad judgment by Obama, a guy from Chicago. And what's strange about it is he goes around to all those places where the liberals try to use uh, to stop guns. And I suppose they pretend that if the semi-automatic AR-15 hadn't appeared, that they might think differently. But that isn't at all clear. And I've witnessed an incident where the AR-15 was used to shoot people at an airport. And I was surprised, but I heard it. And the police for performed wonderfully and chased the man out and shot him in the shoulder, unbelievably enough, with all the hundreds of rounds and thousands of rounds he was emptying on them. And so I've, I've been in that situation, I've seen it, and most of all, I want to say that we need the people in order to keep the place safe, as Carson says. We can never entrust that to the government, and yet we do rely on the government to do the best that they can to arrest these kinds of criminals and bring them to justice. But they can't be everywhere, and Carson said that people should defend themselves. Now, they had the right to carry a weapon in Oregon, in that college. And one of the people who was supposed to be there was a French train hero, and he would have been killed. The, the hero would have been killed. And then yesterday, two armed people chased around uh, a single, another single unarmed French train hero, uh, Spencer Stone. There were three, and two of them have been, uh, their, their lives have been in danger in America. And they brought Spencer Stone to a critical condition. He's in the hospital now, using just a knife-wielding attack, which the police, I don't think, responded to very well. They have yet to apprehend the people who did this, and they should be talking about that we need to protect people in the fight against terrorism here in the United States. That's what it's really coming down to. So I think that looking at the totality, that we need to maintain the Second Amendment and to understand that it is necessary because the, peop the government may fail you. In addition to the fact that it has historically happened that governments have disarmed the population and attacked them. And it seems like every time that we find, we talk about this issue, there's little insinuations, like the hyper-political people like to do with these snide remarks in the press that, oh, you must be saying that Obama's going to come out and take over the states. And then you get a little sneer about how racist that is. Well, we've had instances where Barack Obama has riled up insurrection to attack the police, kill police. History will look at this as very unprincipled leadership, as I do now, and so many voters do. But we are still left with our responsibilities, not only to defend ourselves, if need be, with arms, but now to defend that very right. I view it as very similar to those who sneer at the supreme sacrifice made by those who are brought into the armed forces in time of war. And everybody likes to think, oh, I'm a hero, I do the same thing, I could be commander-in-chief, and women in particular are frustrated by the fact that for some reason men need to protect the society. And they could say, well, sure, against other men, primarily. Well, yes, because men are the greatest danger. But this remains a reality. We'll never have freedom if we cannot present a deterrent to tyranny, but also against barbarism, we've seen a lot of that lately, and against chaos and violent anarchy, those who are displeased for some reason or another with society, and somehow have become motivated not to work for change in society, but to attack it. And so we're at the point, as I see it, where all the candidates have to take a stand on this. Now, Hillary has said she wants to take people's guns away. Well, sure, she already took away our security by using her own private email to handle classified information about very armed and dangerous people all around the world. It's a good example 
of how she doesn't get it. That yes, we can have freedom, you can have a good life, yes, you can run for president, Hillary Clinton, but you cannot behave so foolishly that you put our very safety at risk. And the same must be said for all of the candidates, <clears throat> Democratic or Republican, who want to attack this right, the Second Amendment. Now there are alternatives that we must look to. One is upholding the rule, the law and order, through supporting our police department. Now police have become more sophisticated, and their sophistication isn't to attack the population. It is to be able to deal with violence and crime in the midst of an orderly, peaceful society, to be able to separate out those who are presenting harm to their community and their nation from those who are not. Certainly we don't and we can't support any kind of racial profiling. We can't support religious profiling. However, we need to pick up on cues which will help to prevent quickly any violence against the population. And the same is the kind of adjustment which Muslims and immigrants are going to have to make. Now we have freedom. It is based on submitting to the Constitution. It's sort of magical the way that the 13 colonies came together. It was providential, really. I believe it was a blessing from God. But they were able to, with the events in the world and the oppression coming down from the King of England to tax intolerably and take away rights from Americans, that they were able to group themselves into a federation and declare independence from that oppression. And when they did, they acted as good, lawful citizens, but who had to form a new government because they could not submit to the armed oppression of the government. And they threw off that government, and everybody who wants to submit to that constitution, no matter what religion or race, they can achieve this level of independence and freedom and security by maintaining the Second Amendment and by going forward, not going back. Not taking the weapons away and trying to refight the Civil War or refight perceived inequities between races, or perhaps to turn back history and bring in more aggressive armed religions like Islam so that they may govern us. To all of these things, the Second Amendment of a well-armed militia presents a needed and in fact indispensable element of our freedom. I'm Steve Carlson. I'm running for President of the United States, and I approve this message.